Good morning. My name is Susan Reardon. I'm a staff hearing officer, and I call the meeting of Wednesday, May 2nd to order. Today we have three items on our agenda, and I haven't received any requests for continuances, withdrawals, or postponements, so I will hear the items in the order they appear on the agenda. Under announcements and appeals, I have no announcements or appeals. Um, is there anybody in the audience who would like to address the staff hearing officer on items not on our agenda today? No? Seeing no one, we'll move to the first item, which is 3050 Seacliff Road, or Seacliff. Anytime you're ready, Dan. Okay. Uh, good morning, Ms. Reardon, Dan Gullett, Associate Planner. Uh, this project is at 3050 Seacliff Road. The project site is currently being um, redeveloped with a new single family house. Um, the subject of this project is alterations to an existing wall along Seacliff. Seacliff is a, is a private road. Um, this parcel is toward the end of the cul-de-sac. Um, what's existing is a six-foot stucco wall that runs along the front property line and down along uh, the driveway. Um, the zoning ordinance has a limitation of three and a half feet within 10 feet of a front property line and within 10 feet of the driveway for a distance of 20 feet back from the right-of-way. And uh, the existing wall uh, was constructed, I believe, in 1990. At that time, um, we measured front lot lines differently, so it was it was permitted. We do um, we do have a different standard, and um, the zoning ordinance has been updated since 1990 to clarify what what the standard is. So the proposal is to add uh, eight new stone columns along the wall and a stone cap and two new six-foot gates, uh, one an entry gate and one more of a garden access gate. Um, in, in total, within the restricted height area, it would, it would raise the wall approximately 10 inches. Um, this project was reviewed on consent at Single Family Design Board. Single Family Design Board was um, very supportive of the changes um, that would require modification, um, saying that the changes um, break up the massing of the wall and, it, and enhance the aesthetics of the area. Um, also included is um, improvements to a call box that opens the automatic gate along the driveway. Um, you can go to the, the details. Um, this is the proposed call box along the driveway. This would be um, four and a half feet, uh, and then there would be a sandstone cap on top of that. Um, transportation operations looked at the wall and at the call box and doesn't have any concerns about um, site visibility for drivers uh, entering or exiting this driveway or the adjacent driveway. And it would go in this location here where yeah. the existing one is? It would, it would replace this and be moved slightly forward of this. Towards the road? Uh, towards the road. Um, the desire of the applicant is to have the, the gates swing um, out rather than in, so it, it would be a change to the functioning of the, of the gates. And where's the neighbor's driveway on this one? Uh, the neighbor's driveway is is here. So the, the wall actually continues, the, the stu stucco wall continues um, down the neighbor's driveway. And that's indicated by this line here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So, um, other than the call box, um, the the existing condition is is non-conforming. This is increasing the height of the wall. Um, some we believe it's appropriate. It doesn't um, it doesn't create a safety concern. Uh, it, it does have aesthetic merit, and um, 
in the call box isn't isn't a concern of transportation operations. So we we believe that's a, an appropriate improvement too. So staff's recommending approval of this project um, without conditions. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like to state your name for the record and add any additional comments? I'm Trish Allen with Suzanne Elledge Planning and Permitting, and I actually don't I don't have anything to add um, for once. I think uh, Dan covered all the details, so I'm really here for any questions you may have. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address the staff hearing officer on this item? No, see no one. Have we received any public comment on this item? None for Paula Westbury or anything? Okay, so I've closed the public hearing. Um, I went out to the site yesterday and saw the existing wall and got an idea of the surroundings. And um, I agree with both staff and this single family design board that the um, improvements that you're proposing to the wall actually enhance the, the existing situation. And as um, Dan indicated, it is a non-conforming situation, so you're not making anything worse. Um, I did have concerns regarding the, the call box regard, uh, in terms of its size and whether it would block or impede visibility from the neighbor's driveway. But given the low volume of the cul-de-sac and the fact it's at the end of the cul-de-sac and there is adequate room for the person, the neighbor who's exiting uh, 30, 30 Seacliff Drive mm -hmm. that they could come up and um, you know, it's kind of a little roundabout right now. So given the volumes and the, the speed and stuff, I think that that's um, not a concern. So given that, I can make the findings outlined in the staff report and staff's not proposing any conditions and I don't think there's any, any um, additional ones necessary. I did look at the comments from the SFDB and they were suggesting that the, some of the columns be lowered and you'll continue to work with them, but in terms of uh, I'm pretty sure zoning. These, these plans reflect that change. Okay. Yeah. We worked out um, the neighbors at 3030 did come to the consent calendar and we made some adjustments that they were very happy with. Mm -hmm. That's probably why they're not here today, because <laughs> we worked it out there. Okay, great. That's so good yeah, to hear. they were supportive of the project. Okay, so with that, I approve your project. Uh, my action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days, and they have oversight authority of all my actions, and if they felt this warranted additional discussion before them, they could call it up during that same 10-day appeal mm -hmm. period. And if that was to occur, Dan would contact you. Okay. okay. In terms of going back to design review, do we need to wait until that that ten day period? Um, um, you don't expires? need to wait, but it, it, it it's um, it, you know a risk. Uh -huh. Yeah, but you could go ahead and get approval, and it would be contingent on the appeal period ending, okay. which yeah. you would be on S SFDB the same day, when it, the the same day or the following week, anyways, because of their calendar. Okay. Right. So it be you could apply for it and get in queue. Yeah. yeah. And it's to return on consent, so it may right. be not till the next week where the the full board actually ratifies the minutes. So, okay, we're still time. The next item is 433 East Mitchell Trina. If the applicant would like to come up. So this proposed project um, is a remodel of an existing 928 square foot, two-story single-family residence. It's at the corner of East Mitchell Terrena and Olive Street, the western corner. Um, the project would result in a 1,336 square foot residence. The, the parcel is 2,115 square feet. The existing house, um, is non-conforming. It encroaches into to three setbacks. It was constructed um, prior to any of our zoning regulations. Um, it's actually zero lot line along Olive Street, and it's about eight and a half feet from Michel Terrena, and it is uh, about five and a half feet on the southwestern um, property line. The R3 setbacks are uh, 10 feet along Olive Street and Mitchell Terrena Street, and um, six feet along the interior lot line. 
the area of uh, addition is actually entirely within the understory, so it doesn't change the footprint or, or volume of the existing structure at all. Um, this is uh, the proposed floor area in the understory and the encroachment along um, um, Mitchell Terrena is here and then Olive Street is here. So the, the upper floor extends to the sidewalk on Olive Street and this would retain some crawl space um, along that area of Olive Street. There's no new um, openings proposed in the setback um, along Olive or uh, Mitchell Terrena for, for this improvement in the understory. There are uh, two new windows um, proposing the setback uh, along the interior lot line. They encroach about um, six inches. There's a third new window which is actually outside of the setback um, for the understory. Uh, the project also includes um, window and door changes um, to the upper story. Uh, there's one additional window in the setback along the southeastern property line, and then um, there's window changes um, that aren't subject to modification along Olive Street. There is an enlarged window, which is subject to modification along Olive Street and a new door, and I'll show you those in, um, in the elevations. So this is the, the front of the house on Mitchell Terrena. And then um, the Olive Street side, you can see this one window um, enlarging from the existing condition in the setback. Um, the former chimney is being removed. Um, there's another window being removed, and these windows are being replaced in, in the same um, location and configuration. And this is the new door along Olive Street that's being um, proposed. Uh, along the southeastern property line, these are the three um, new windows that encroach the six inches. Um, so there's three setback modifications um, for each of those three setbacks. Also, there's a fourth modification um, to include a, a replacement guardrail. Um, this is the Olive Street sidewalk. Uh, this is the 10-foot front setback um, line. The, the rules are um, that Fences and walls cannot exceed three and a half feet within 10 feet of the front lot line. And the way that height's measured is from, um, if there's less than five foot separation between fences and walls, it's from the bottommost point of the fence or wall to the topmost point. So um, this exceeds eight feet within the setback and it also exceeds the three and a half feet within 10 feet of the front lot line. But what's being proposed here is um, it's essentially a guardrail that's required by building code because there's a, there's a safety concern here. Um, so staff is um, supporting all the modifications as proposed and isn't recommending any changes. Um, this project was uh, reviewed by Single Family Design Board and, um, and supported by Single Family Design Board and um, we're recommending approval. So this elevation here shows this way? Correct, and, yes. And there's another um, fence here, but it's three and a half feet, so the modification's only in regards to this one here, correct? That's right. Um, I have some other questions, but I think I'll wait until you after you discuss. You want to state your name for the record? Uh, Matthew Eastwood from Blackbird Architects. Do you have anything else you're going to add? Uh, no, Dan covered it really well. Thank you. Okay, my other questions then. Um, it indicates a, a covered parking space off site. Where is that at? Um, it's, it's actually on a separate lot in the center of the block. Oh. Um, there's a, um, there's a parcel uh, that's uh, deeded to this property. Uh -huh. And in addition to that, there's a 112th interest in another parcel um, that's for surface parking. 
so how do they get to it? Do they? Um, there's actually a, an easement for a driveway off of um, off of Olive Street that goes down to the center of the block, and there's there's actually 12 individual little uh, parcels in the center there, each each containing one garage. Oh, really? Some garages are missing; they burnt down in the 50s, uh, mm -hmm. but this particular property still has its garage. So do they park there and then walk back out on the street to come down, uh, or is there an entry yes, or access? Yes, there's two ways to do it. Um, there's the driveway uh, for vehicular access. There's also another um, pedestrian uh, easement that goes between these individual parcels um, out to Mitchell Terrena and then, and then they go up the sidewalk. Yeah. And the proposed addition is less than 50% of the floor area that existed in 1980. So um, the the applicant isn't required to provide two spaces as um, as needed by today's standards. Okay. And the other question was: um, this talks about a new porch. Is it covered? Or? Uh, no, actually not. It's just uh, it's just hardscape uh, for. The kitchen's up here, and mm -hmm. it's to exit and then, uh, and then go out onto Olive Street. Uh, this little bit of um, site, because of the big existing drop-off here with the existing retaining wall, um, was never activated as part of, you know, they could ne the users could never use this part of the parcel. It was fenced off from the street. There was no um, door out, and there's mm -hmm. this big drop-off. So basically, it's a, it's a little service porch. Okay. That was my last question. Um, uh, so I'll open the public hearing. Is there anyone here in the audience who would like to address the staff hearing officer on 433 East Mitchell Trina Street? No, we did receive one email from a neighbor, Kathleen Weeger, expressing support with the project and excited to see this house being brought up to, um, to the standards. Um, I'll close the public hearing. Um, I went out to the site yesterday and uh, was surprised that they were already doing stuff, but they said they had, they had the demo permit. <laughs> but uh-oh. But um, it, it is a small, constrained site and um, not many options for additions. So I think this is a good solution to use existing understory area that's all within the existing footprint instead of trying to go out and cover more of the, the little open yard that it has. Um, so in, car in regards to the modification request to convert the understory to habitable space, I think that's real, it's, it's appropriate improvement and supportable. Um, in regards to the different window locations, um, you know, whenever there's new windows within setbacks, we always look at what potential impacts there are to the neighbors. And in regards to the ones that are in the, the front setback, that those are fine, appropriate. Um, I think actually it's this one on the second story that's, that's new. Correct. Oh, that's right. Um, uh, in regards to the ones on the basement level, given the existing grade and the, the existing fence, and that's going to cause no impact to the uh, adjacent neighbor. The second story window um, on the corner, it is still within the um, overlooking the house in this area and as the staff report indicates it's not looking directly into any windows uh, private there are outdoor areas in this area so I don't think the addition of that window in the back would cause a um, would cause an impact to the neighbors in regards to the um, the wall the fence wall that's in another appropriate improvement we are <coughs> looking currently looking at that section of the ordinance right now and um, trying to make way, find ways to make it more um, user friendly. And one of the ideas we have is to amend that section of the code to define the height of a wall within 10 feet of the front property line from the right of way, because that's what we're most concerned about is the visual effect from the public right of way. And if you want to look at a 10 foot wall from your property, then you know that's more of an impact to yourself versus the public. So. In regards to that modification, I think it's appropriate too, given the fact that it's not going to exceed three and a half feet from the right of way. So, with those comments, I can make the findings as outlined in the staff report. And staff's not proposing any condition of approval, and I don't feel I need to add any. So, um, I approve your project as is. And my action is appealable to the uh, planning commission within 10 calendar days. And, like you heard me say on the first project, they also have oversight authority. 
and if they felt this warranted additional discussion before then, they could call it up. And if that was to occur again, contact you. Okay? okay great. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. Thanks. The last item is 101 East Korea Boulevard. If the applicant would like to come up. Yeah, this is for um, 101 East Cabrillo Boulevard. This is the Fish House restaurant property. And um, what's being proposed is a new patio along Anacapa Street. Uh, currently, it's proposed at 345 square feet. It would provide additional outdoor seating for the restaurant. Um, the project as a whole also includes uh, removal of the planter along Anacapa Street to provide for the patio, um, reconfiguration of the parking lot, added bicycle parking up here, a new trash enclosure over here, and then the subject of the modification are um, four new windows and a door um, along uh, this front. I'll show you that location. So the this is in um, the HRC2 zone, which requires a 20-foot front setback for buildings um, that exceed 15 feet. Now. So this is looking at the building from Anacapa Street. This is the, the new patio. And these are the four windows proposed. and. Door. So those are approximately eight feet. Um, it's it's eight feet to the wall from the back of sidewalk. Uh, so those are approximately eight feet from from the right of way. This project was reviewed by Historic Landmarks Commission in 2010. Um, the remarks from the Hor Historic Landmarks Commission were clearly in support of the windows and door that were proposed. Um, the commission at that hearing so they could support um, some patio, but they they were of the thinking that it would be ha about half the size as what was proposed at the time. Um, what's being proposed now is is similar um, to that area. Uh, again, the subject of the modification is just the windows and and the door because the setback is for the buildings. The building only. Uh, the size of the patio is um, is still subject to design review approval by Historic Landmarks Commission. Um, staff is pr supporting uh, the modification um, for the windows and door, and has uh, four recommended conditions of approval. Um, the staff report um, has three conditions of approval. Um, staff is recommending a, a change to the first one. The first one calls for a, a frontage zone along Anacapa Street. This is something that um, the pedestrian master plan requires, and um, it essentially provides a, a buffer area between the sidewalk and structures. Um, to, to facilitate pedestrian use of, of the sidewalk. Uh, the pedestrian master plan calls for a foot and a half frontage zone. And um, so this is, this is the, the sidewalk area and, and the proposed wall uh, for the patio. Uh, the foot and a half would start from, from the back of sidewalk. Uh, the, the condition in the staff report says that a foot and a half should be provided. Subsequently, I've I've reviewed um, this proposal with um, transportation planning staff further, and transportation planning would be comfortable with with a foot and a half um, to the cap of 
the proposed wall um, because the wall um, lays back at an angle toward the building, um, the, the capital walls further back than the base of the wall. And uh, <coughs> transportation's opinion is that, um, that if the foot and a half was measured to the cap of the wall, that that would provide um, the intended frontage area um, by the pedestrian master plan. So the, the changes I'm proposing are that the patio shall be redesigned to provide a minimum foot and a half buffer to the back, from the back of sidewalk to the cap of the patio wall. And I also want um, a minimum one foot landscape buffer to provide landscaping at the bottom. Uh, currently, um, the, this wall would have to move back I believe a foot and two inches, so that's it in case it's redesigned just to make make clear what what the intent is so the the condition would be one foot at the bottom, one and a half at the top to provide that that front of zone area um, the The other um, new condition I'm proposing is um, related to the the parkway strip along. Anna Kappa, and we have photos. Uh, there's there's juniper bushes along this parkway strip, and um, and they exceed the eight inches um, <laughs> maximum limitation of landscaping, other than trees in the the parkway area. Uh, so, staff's recommendation is that these juniper bushes be removed and. Um, replaced with new landscaping subject to review and approval by the Historic Landmarks Commission. Uh, the other two conditions are um, that a trash enclosure be provided with adequate area for recycling containers um, and provided on the real property and screened from view from surrounded properties in the street and then the standard um, notification to contractors for unanticipated archaeological resource finds that um, outlines the procedures if something is found during construction. So with those conditions, um, staff's recommending approval of the modification. Okay, great, thank you. <coughs> Um, I don't have any questions right now, but um, would you like to state your name for the record and add anything additional? Sure. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, my name is Sky McGinnis. Um, uh, I completely agree with the staff recommendations, and uh, we've actually contacted the archaeologist David Stone in advance of this, so he's aware of it. Um, so. Okay, and have you seen staff? Do you have a copy for me? Uh, yes. Have you seen staff's revised conditions in your... Yes, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's all very appropriate. We'll replace those junipers as back as far as you want. <laughs> okay. All right, great, thanks. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to address the staff hearing officer on this item? No? I haven't received any um, public comment. And we, okay. So I'll close the public hearing. Um, I went out to the site yesterday and, um, you know, walked around the area, got a feel of what it is. Uh, and I'm glad staff brought up that concern regarding the buffer because I have that same concern too and just the feeling walking down the sidewalks and when something's right up on the sidewalk you get a different feeling and then with the side I don't know how wide the sidewalk in this area but it's not you know expansive so no I think it's a good idea to pull the patio back and I know um, that the patio per se is not in my jurisdiction however the doors and windows are and is it for an appropriate improvement so in a roundabout way we do get there um, another thing in, in regards to the planter area is that there is nice planter areas provided along the Cabrillo frontage, so it would continue it around the corner. Um, so I agree with that condition. Okay. One of my initial concerns when you know looking at the, the revised condition, um, and I think staff's done well to try to address it, is um, the the fact of providing an additional or providing a minimum landscaped area because 
you know, if it was just a foot and a half from the cap, or if this decided just, just to be angled in, mm -hmm. okay, I got my foot and a half, and there's no landscaped area there. Right. So I think that's um, good that there is inserted in there a minimum one foot. Um, and Phil Suiting has been retained uh, to be okay. the landscape architect, so okay. it'll be it'll nice. Look nice, know. yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I know the look of the chart house is these angled walls mm -hmm. um, and along the front, you know, it's all angled. Um, looking at the side view of the wall, it's more up and down or perpendicular looks like. Is that, yeah, well, that one looks kind of angled, huh? Yeah, everything is angled. It's pretty remarkable. I think, I think it's shown in this section. Oops. <laughs> at the door straight and down that one's in. Okay. Well, one of my concerns is that, um, or not concerned, that my understanding of the intent that staff has in implementing this um, this provision of the master plan um, with the foot and a half is that at the top of the wall, you, you have that feeling of openness because it is angled back. If the wall to be, was to become straight up and down, I would like to have some kind of provision that that foot and a half would be achieved at the base. Okay, yeah. No, the, definitely the intention is to mirror the building. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll step back. Okay, so I might add something in there just to clear that if it were to... Okay. Um, that it would be a foot and a half. But I'm fine with the way that it's proposed with the foot at the base and the foot and a half opening up and kind of providing that expanse. So okay. I'm, cool. I'm fine with that. And I agree with the junipers. I parked right here and, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and the juniper. So I, I agree with that condition. So if you're fine with those amended conditions, um, I can make the findings outlined in the staff report and um, approve the project subject to the amended conditions of approval. Um, and like you heard me say on the other two projects, my action is appealable to the Planning Commission within 10 calendar days. And they also have oversight authority of all my actions. And if they felt this warranted additional discussion before the Planning Commission, they could call it up during that same 10-day appeal period. Okay. And if that was to occur, Dan would contact you. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. You came just in time it, yes, for the yes, <laughs> yes. You came for the good part. Yes. Huh? Yeah, good morning. <laughs> so, yes, they approved all the provisions that um, we talked about. Okay. And there's yeah. minor changes to the conditions to recognize the wall. Okay, and great. And the juniper plants. So. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, the, those those can go, in my opinion, as well. And now, is it? Um, do we have to go back to HLC? Okay. Yes. Yes. They couldn't okay. give a formal approval until the until, they, um, until you gave your yes, approval. Yes. Until the zoning. So there's were comments, okay. and so now they'll go back and they'll um, work on the actual okay. the design of it and the size of it. And, and then, just like the other one, we can run that simultaneously during that 10-day period. You can apply to get on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Given their application or their cycle. Yeah, their cycle. That'll be outside of the appeal period by the time you come on. Okay. Come on. Okay? Perfect. Great. So I adjourn the meeting. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Thank you very much.